All right, welcome everybody. Today we're going to learn about how nature journaling can make you a better birder. Can you imagine birding without your binoculars? Well, right now I'm going to show you that nature journaling is a tool just as powerful for improving your birding as your binoculars are. Nature journaling and birding are a match made in heaven. In this talk, I'm going to show you how nature journaling can take your birding to the next level, help you see more birds, learn faster, sharpen your memory, and experience more pleasure. If you are already nature journaling and birding, then I commend you, and I think you will still learn some specific points that will improve your birding game. Have some paper and a pencil on hand for the exercises. You might be thinking, great, just another thing to learn. You're already overwhelmed with all the things that you have to learn as a birder. The scientific names, the habitats, the behaviors, the locations, the calls. But nature journaling is not just another thing to learn. It is a tool that will help you see more and facilitate your learning in other departments. As if that weren't enough, it will make you enjoy your time in nature more, especially the time you spend birding. Guess where this photo is taken? I was lucky enough to go on this trip two years in a row with John Muir Laws to Tanzania. And the really funny thing was that at this particular location, our driver on the safari was really surprised that we wanted to keep looking at birds. This was a nature journaling safari, and we spent several hours at this location and even forgot about our lunch. Most tourists were ready to move on and hopefully see some cheetahs or something more exciting, but we were having a great time here with these birds. So you might be asking yourself, why? Why should I add nature journaling to my birding practice? Well, you're guaranteed to see more birds if you practice nature journaling. You're also going to get a whole brain experience. Combining drawing and attention is going to accelerate your learning. You're going to be able to externalize your thinking. And just by using your hands and verbalizing on the paper some of what you're observing, it's going to improve your birding practice. Also, it's going to help you with species names and field marks because the more elaborate the encoding, the better your memory will be. So when you just look at something and try to focus on it really hard and try to memorize where it has white spots, where it's black, where it's not, and then you get back to the field guide later on or even a couple of minutes later, it's really hard to remember those things. But if you're drawing and sketching and using a piece of paper and using your hands, it's going to help you remember a lot better. This is um, one name for this in psychology is the production effect. And you'll also have a record of these things. It's much more sophisticated and involved than just having a life list. It will also help you provide uh, experience wonder in the small things. So those um, pigeons or turkey vultures or trash birds uh, can still be fascinating through nature journaling. And last of all is legacy. So um, last of all is legacy because uh, wouldn't it be so sweet to someday uh, find the nature journal pages of, of your grandma? And you've probably had this experience where you've found photos or letters, old letters from one of your ancestors and really been amazed and, and learned so much and connected with them um, so much in their life so much through those those things that they left behind and wouldn't it be amazing if they had a nature journal of all the birds that they had seen in their childhood especially things that we might not be able to see anymore that would be really amazing so seeing more birds learning faster remembering more experiencing more joy and leaving a legacy are the main reasons why nature journaling can take your birding to the next level. This is a quote I really love that summarizes a lot of the benefits of drawing. Because maybe you've had this experience before. 
You get all excited. And then you realize it's just another turkey vulture. And I think it's really important for us uh, to not be dismissive of pigeons and vultures and the so-called trash birds. And nature journaling provides a bunch of techniques that helps you appreciate even these birds. So you don't necessarily need to go out and find those more exotic, more special birds and have that hedonic treadmill where you keep looking for the new next bird around the corner because nature journaling can help you learn so much and appreciate even these turkey vultures. Here's a page that I did um, where I, I learned a lot about turkey vultures um, while nature journaling them uh, feeding on something at the beach. So there are several techniques in nature journaling that can help you um, and the first one is I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, abbreviated as in a wearmo. And another one is using words, numbers, and images. These are the three languages of nature journaling. Another one is iteration. So just this idea that you can always turn the page. It's not a painting of a bird. Um, it's not a oil painting of a bird. It is a journal, so you can flip the page and do another sketch. And the question sketch, so thinking of drawing as a learning tool. How can your sketches and your drawings be more like questions that help you learn about the bird that you're looking at? And this one is very fun, landscape or a plant. So by drawing landscapes or plants that aren't moving, you set yourself up in a situation to see more birds. And this is my special technique. All right, so here is a bird that I saw in my backyard a couple months ago. And we're gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate how to use I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. So the typical thing to do on like a birding walk would be someone spots this bird and immediately they start calling out the name of it, the species of it, all of these things. Um, but in I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, we try to break those processes down because there's certain visual information that your brain is getting from this bird that is giving you an identification. And so with I notice, we focus on what we're actually seeing. So I will demonstrate right now how I would do that. And you can write these things down in your journal. You can also do them verbally, which is really cool. So I notice something um, standing on this white hoop in my garden. Uh, it looks like it has wings and a tail. I notice on the tail that there are bars going across horizontally that are darker. Um, that are a little bit narrower than the pale bars or pale bands going across. Uh, they seem to be sort of like a dark brown, warm brown color. Most of the underside of the bird is sort of like a pale, um, in my watercolor palette would be like my buff titanium, sort of like a pale, almost a white color. Um, on the front, what looks like the chest and the stomach, there's sort of like a streaking. It seems like it gets finer as it goes further down. I see yellow legs um, with toes. The toes look really interesting. I think I see some toes that are like wrapping in different directions and I might even see a talon, but they're yeah, mostly yellow and um, going back to the belly and the chest. So anyways, you could go on and on with that forever. And the important thing to do is to just not, uh, the important thing to do is to not think of your assumptions and your interpretations as things that you notice. Like what are the actual visual things that you notice? Um, because saying that I notice a Cooper's Hawk is not actually something that I notice. That is an interpretation and we're often wrong. So starting with just kind of focusing on those basic observations. Then for the I wonder part, really fun one, one of my favorites, you get to ask questions. So instead of, once again, in this step, instead of going to these interpretations or assuming we know all these facts or regurgitating facts that we read or were told by someone else, um, because for example, I could say, I notice a chicken hawk or uh, a red tail hawk or all of this other information that could be incorrect. 
but instead focusing on what I actually observe and then asking questions is a much deeper and more sophisticated way to approach this. So my questions might be, you could even phrase your interpretation as a question. So instead of saying, um, it's an occipiter, I could say, I wonder if it is an occipiter. I wonder if it is a bird of prey. I wonder what it's doing there. I wonder how old it is. I wonder how long it has been there for. I wonder when it ate last. I wonder if it's a male or a female. I wonder if there's a way I could figure out if it's a male or a female. I wonder how a master birder would interpret this. I wonder what it might eat. I wonder if other birds notice it. I wonder what the other birds are doing. I wonder if it communicates with birds outside of its own species. So just practicing asking lots of questions is an extremely powerful intellectual tool. And I could go on a whole tangent on this and I have whole videos about asking questions. I really do think it is one of the most powerful and most important intellectual tools for the future. And then last but not least is it reminds me of. So that it reminds me of is where you can bring in the outside information, you can bring in your interpretations, and you can also bring in silly things. Like maybe those uh, toes remind you of some kind of weird Italian pasta that you ate when you were a kid, or maybe the colors on the chest of the bird remind you of a certain ice cream flavor. Uh, connecting to food is always a good one. And also you can just, in the it reminds me of, bring in, it reminds me of an occipiter, it reminds me of a cooper's hawk, um, things like that. The other important thing to point out about nature journaling is we do try to use words, numbers, and images. Um, and my approach here would be to do an I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, and maybe do just a quick sketch of this bird that I will show you. Um, a quick sketch because this bird's not probably not going to be there for very long, and then I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of would be a really powerful nature journaling approach to use in this instance. All right, so the other thing that I mentioned before is sort of my secret technique. And what I like to do is set myself up somewhere where I can draw or paint a landscape or a tree. And while I am doing that, the birds often start coming to me. So because I'm in a place for a long period of time, focused on something, not moving very much, the birds often come closer. So while I was painting this waterfall, um, on the page right next to it, I did these notes about this really cool wren that came and was making what I thought were some alarm calls at me. Um, so you can see how my sketches are really, really simple. Um, and some of them I didn't even capture the head. Uh, you can see the tail posture, you can see the feet, uh, really important to capture that tail, of course, and you can see how I used words to complement the drawings. I have a whole video called Birding and Nature Journaling, The Secret Technique, where I talk about and demonstrate this technique in the field. The same time that I was doing that, I also discovered this bird. Um, so let's do, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, and now is your chance to practice. So I'm going to play a short, the short video here, um, and you can use the prompts. I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. You can pause the video, and uh, so go ahead and pause the video and uh, write down a bunch of things that you notice, things that you directly observe, things that you have questions about, your questions, and things that it reminds you of. So go ahead and pause the video and write down things that you notice, things that you wonder, and things that it reminds you of. All right, hopefully you got a bunch of things down there, especially in the I notice and the I wonder categories. This is a really good thing to practice. Now I'm gonna give you some pro tips. These are the things that are hardest to learn, hardest to teach. 
um, but will make the biggest difference. So community is probably the number one way that you can improve your learning, uh, whether it's nature journaling or birding, you've probably already figured this out, but because of the accountability, because of the feedback, how feedback affects your learning, um, it's more fun with a group of people, you've probably already figured that one out. Um, intentions, setting your intentions and being clear about them, working on your metacognition, so thinking about your own thinking, figuring out your unspoken intentions. A lot of us um, have unspoken intentions around maybe impressing people with beautiful pages. That can be a problem. Um, some of us might want to impress other people with how much we know about birds and not make any mistakes. These can be things that if you asked us consciously, we wouldn't say that those are our goals around birding or around nature journaling, but they could be in there in, um, in your unconscious. So um, figuring that part out, and then also thinking of drawing as a tool. So de-romanticizing art, a lot of people have these old wounds um, from when they were children around art, um, so they have trauma there, um, and trying to de-romanticize art and focus on a growth mindset. So thinking of it as a learnable skill, not something that people are born with. So talent is, talent is the word that you're not allowed to use around me. <laughs> So community, this was an awesome trip that I went on, a nature journaling trip in the Point Reyes Peninsula. You can have potlucks with community. Um, we saw some really cool, uh, really cool bird activity, lots of northern harriers, and we also saw a raven eating a gopher. Um, then we went over there and found what I thought were raven pellets. Um, which is something that I was really curious about. So community will definitely help you learn faster. Um, and then also remember, drawing is just a tool. So this could be this could be the main obstacle that you have to deal with to incorporate nature journaling into your birding is is the way that you think about drawing. But remember, drawing is just a tool. Here's an example of um, a page by John Muir Laws where he was doing an illustration of a duck and turn it into a diagram. So see how he uses words, he's, he's using little arrows with colors in different places. Uh, if you're ever having problems with a drawing of a bird, turn it into a diagram. And you can see my example on the right uh, have lots of quick sketches. I'm also using words and arrows pointing to parts of the bird that I didn't draw and just capturing anything. Um, so focusing on you know turning things into diagrams and thinking about it in terms of pencil miles, like just trying to get um, as much mileage out of your pencil as possible and focusing on quantity, not quality. These are the things that are gonna help with your drawing. Okay, so you might be thinking, all right, all right, I get it, but I still really want to improve my drawing skills. So if you do really still want to focus on your drawing skills, there are a couple things that can help, um, and some things matter more than others visually. So there's a visual hierarchy that is really important, and uh, I think that the choice of subject is crucial. Uh, it's the part that can make the biggest difference with the least amount of work, so a good return on investment. And a lot of times birds are in positions or certain birds could be really challenging subjects. And just knowing that um, choosing a challenging subject is fine, but that might make your drawing look weird or, or sort of hard um, could um, affect it. So um, composition is also another really big one. Value, so the difference between light and dark, and then shape. So those are some of the more important aspects. So let's talk first about shape. It's really important sometimes to think in terms of shapes and dissociate from structures. So um, here's an example of some studies that I did based on John Muir Law's book, um, the, jo the Law's Guide to Drawing Birds, a really great book. I'll post the link in the description below. And um, thinking about the posture of the bird. What is the overall posture? Getting that right is super critical. The proportions are also super critical. And the little angles, that's what you can see I'm working on in this particular, these particular sketches. Those, th those three things really make a big difference. 
All right, so let's practice this and having this be upside down is a tool to help you dissociate from the identity of what you're drawing and focus more on the shapes. So right now, take your paper and your pen and um, draw what you see here in terms of shapes without thinking about the anatomy or the body parts of this bird. So go ahead and pause the video and take a moment and draw this in terms of shapes. All right, great. Now that you did a sketch of that, let's move on to the next one. Okay. Okay, so now that you have drawn that, we are going to zoom in a little bit closer on this bird. So go ahead and draw what you see now. As we are closer to this bird, this might be what you see through your binoculars. This is a photo I did take through my binoculars. What do you see now? And remember that we have a tendency, especially with raptors, to overemphasize the beak, the eyes, the, the size of the head, and the claws. So make sure you keep your proportions true to what you see and only draw what you see here. So go ahead and pause the video and take a moment to draw what you see. All right, great. And these might be examples of birds that might sit still for a little bit longer, but remembering those priorities and focusing on those shapes is going to help you get an accurate drawing. Also helpful, this is from John Muir Law's book. Uh, this is a drawing by him. Um, is to think about your drawing in this sort of order of operations. So thinking about the posture line, what is the line um, that goes through the body that shows sort of the angle of the neck, um, the curve of the back, how that bird is standing, sitting, or swimming, and capturing that. Really important. And then next, blocking in the proportions. What are sort of these major areas? And you can do this with a pencil, uh, John Muir Laws likes to use a non-photo blue pencil and you can also do it with like a gray pen or you can even do it straight with your ink and just start getting these basic shapes of the bird. These are the things that are going to be really characteristic of that species. So blocking in those proportions um, and seeing how they are related to each other and then carving in these angles. So like on the coot you'll notice that there's this really characteristic angle of how the beak goes into the forehead, um, really useful. Also, the angles around the tail are really characteristic. So trying to carve in some of these angles is, all of these things are more important than the details of the feathers or the color of the eye, things like that. So here's another example from John Muir Law's book, The Law's Guide to Drawing Birds. And just look at how he really focused on the shapes and dissociated from the identity of the animal. Like if you look at some of these, you're like, wow, that's just like a weird shape. And if you do focus just on the shape, it helps your brain see and more accurately draw than when you're thinking about like, oh, that is the beak of a bird. Here's an example I did when I was trying to practice from his book. I was so focused on, um, you know, what these anatomical features are that I got the proportions really messed up. And you can see like, the way the head is and the beak, it just doesn't look quite right. So there's a time and place for both, but sometimes knowing a lot um, gets in the way of seeing, and sometimes knowing the anatomy can help you with the drawing. But as a birder, you might know a lot about bird taxonomy and anatomy, and sometimes that helps you, and sometimes that doesn't. Another really great practice is birds in flight. So you can see here on this page on the left, I was drawing all of these plants and agaves and things like that, but there were vultures flying over and I was just trying to practice drawing them, especially in flight in positions that I wasn't used to. So there are certain bird flight positions that are really easy. You've probably been drawing seagulls a certain way since you were in elementary school when someone taught you that you could just draw a squiggly line that looked like a bird in flight, but a lot of times because of foreshortening, one wing might be closer to you and it might be a really weird shape, but you need to practice trying to draw those ones. Um, also on the right, you can see some vulture um, postures. I think this one was actually sunning itself and then uh, Cooper's hawk in flight. And you can see how I used arrows 
to indicate part of the flight because a lot of times birds are moving fast so you might not really see that much. So right now we're going to do a practice um, for birds in flight. So you have five seconds um, to draw, choose one of these birds, raptors in flight from audubon.org and just do a five second sketch. Um, so just give yourself five seconds here. How can you capture that basic shape in five seconds? All right, great job. So choose another one and we're gonna go again. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so hopefully you got two sketches in there and the idea is just to practice some of these shapes. These silhouettes is probably how you're gonna have to be doing it. I like using a big fat pen, some type of pen um, that I can get a lot of line variation out of so I can block in the color and not just draw an outline. A lot of times working from the inside out on these shapes is more helpful. Another thing is observing the context. It's going to make you a better birder because we don't want to forget what is around the, the bird and sometimes doing an ultra quick landscape um, is a really good way to incorporate some of that information. So these birds right here don't look the way they would in a field guide and that's how they are in real life. And just incorporating some of the information of this location um, and this is a human influence location. This is a rice paddy in California. Uh, there are buildings and power lines and straight lines, but I think incorporating all of that into like a little landscape sketch showing the birds in C2 is really important and that's how things are in real life. So if you if you were to just take, if you were to draw one of these and then create this sort of idyllic situation around it, that would be interesting but also not really representative of reality so I think incorporating what is what you really see is important and here is a page that I actually did that is, is very similar to this so like drawing birds in a group you can see here I have some shorebirds and a lot of them are just um, you know penciled in shapes where I just kind of filled in these shapes and you can see the orientation to the wind and there's the note there about the wind. So at least I captured that element and I didn't really capture much more details on the birds. All right, so I'm gonna give you five minutes right now. Um, pause your video, set a timer for five minutes and try to draw a little landscape sketch of this situation. What are the important elements from the landscape and how can you sort of show the number of birds and their sort of relative positions. All of that is important information. That is actually scientific information. So go ahead and pause the video, set yourself a timer for five minutes, and draw a landscape sketch with these birds, these beautiful birds, in their natural context. Go ahead and give yourself five minutes to do that. Okay. So hopefully you had a good landscape sketch there with your five minutes. And I think it's really important to include context when we're birding. Thinking about the environment, it's really gonna make you a better birder, being able to make those connections. Before I started nature journaling, I really thought that I knew how to pay attention. I thought that I was able to appreciate and love nature. But since I've been nature journaling for the last six or seven years, I have realized that there is so much more that I can see, so much more that I can notice, appreciate, and love when I come at it with a nature journaling perspective. So just for example, going to Costa Rica where I used to spend tons of time as a kid, where my dad lives, I went back several years ago with my nature journal, new nature journaling practice, and it just accelerated my birding so much. I saw more birds than I realized even existed around my dad's house and just really learned a lot more about them. It accelerated my learning. It helped me remember about them so much more. And I really enjoyed it. And to top it off, I have these pages in a journal that someday could be really interesting for other people to look at. So I just, you know, the last day on that, that trip there in Costa Rica, I 
was waiting for the bus and this page here on the left that you can see as I was waiting for the bus I saw a Caracara it's actually in the uh, more closely related to falcons even though they're basically like a scavenger it was walking around in this field across the street from my dad's house while I was waiting for the bus and I like pulled out my nature journal and started um, sketching about the car car it was so cool and really one of the peak experiences in my life was nature journaling down there in a place I had spent hundreds of hours as a kid it was sunset, there was flycatchers, scissor-tailed flycatchers, there was um, other birds, a bunch of other birds flying around, catching insects out of the air, landing in the spining pochote tree. It was really a peak experience of my life, and it was one of the, the best things that I could have experienced, and it would not have been the same without nature journaling. So I really want to recommend that you combine nature journaling in some way. It's a really flexible practice but you can combine it with your birding and it will really take your birding to the next level. If you're already birding, it's the perfect thing to match with your birding um, and you're probably already keeping a life list and you can just start by putting in teeny little sketches next to your life list. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned some tips about how you can become a better birder through nature journaling.